Hi, this is Russ Anderson. Welcome to part eight of our VR tutorial. In this step, we're going to show how to do the rendering of the mesh if your 3D application does not have a 360 VR camera. So this is also known as the hard way. It's a little more difficult, but it has advantages also. So the process that I'm showing is something that you repeat for each mesh, or maybe a small group of meshes that are in the same general area. And you can do that in typically a copy of the original scene file. You create a different copy for each of the different meshes and run through the process that I'll show. You can also do it maybe if you work a little harder at, uh, or think a little more carefully, you could do it as a duplicate shot into the same scene file. I think that's maybe just a little more complicated. So we're going to be starting out from the same initial file as the last stage where we showed the, the rendering the quote unquote easy way. And we've got our camera facing straight, straight ahead and we want to render our building. So we're going to start out just using Cynthia for a second. We're just going to have it do two little adjustments for all of our trackers. First, we're going to make them not zero weighted temporarily, and that's so that those calculations don't get run when the camera has been changed to a linear perspective view, which is what we're going to be doing. And that would throw off the calculations because much of the many of the trackers are really going to be behind that camera. And the other thing we're going to do is just make the trackers not exportable because we don't really need them in Blender at all. So we'll just do that. We could have done that in the user interface, but it's, it's easy to do it in Cynthia. And if you're doing that a bunch of times, you can take that one little sentence and just put it onto a button on a toolbar and be able to push it. So that's kind of handy. So we've got our building there selected. And with that selected, we're going to run a script called follow mesh. And you'll see shortly what those parameters are for. We're just going to let that script start up. And I'll point out that this process you know, runs for a little bit, depending on how complicated the mesh is. But really, we're just figuring out how much space to reserve for the render. So if you've got a real complicated mesh or a group of meshes, you can just use a bounding box instead. That would be really easy to process at this stage. You can use a proxy object or whatever. Now, in the tutorial here, we're going to be exporting this exact mesh and then rendering it in Blender. But often, you'll just be using the proxy here and then you know, substituting the full mesh with all its materials and whatever in your downstream application. So you can see that that process is completed. And now you can see what's happened. We've got a camera, and it's a standard perspective camera that is exactly homed in on this mesh that we want to render. And those parameters that you saw for this follow mesh script just control how much border or safety area there is around the outside. And one of them would actually let you zoom in if you wanted. But my belief is that that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You know, when the object is farther away, there's no point generating a whole lot of pixels that are just going to be basically downsampled to this resolution anyway. So why not just render the smaller number of pixels and uh, get it done sooner? So this is the scene now that we're ready to export to Blender. So let's get that fired up. And again, we've got it set up to run the Blender export immediately in Blender. So we've got our exact version set up there. And we're going to run, have it appear magically in exactly the right spot. So that has happened now. Just takes a flash to do that. And you can see as I scrub through the Blender timeline, it's now doing exactly the same thing. Now you see in the background, 
Synthize has provided a background image which isn't even vaguely useful. So we're going to go and take that thing out. So we want to be rendering against black with the alpha channel. So let's set that up. We need to look on our render controls. And here in the shading section, there's this selection that's sky or transparent. We don't want any of the sky stuff. We just want this transparent black, uh, black background, basically. So we need to do that. We need to make sure that our output format has an alpha channel and that we're writing that. So let me go grab the output file location and just paste that into there. And with that done, we're now ready to go and render. And you notice we already had the right materials set up there for, for what we're doing here, though often you want to go and do your own fancy materials and shading and God knows what else here. That's kind of out of scope. So it is just running through and doing the render, and you can see that this runs very quickly. And you know, it kind of makes up for the rest of the stuff you have to do, at least when, when it gets going, the render gets done nicely and quickly. So there we go. We've got our complete sequence written out now. And we can go back to synthize. And the next step of this process is, is very similar to what you do with lens distortion. Lens distortion, you go and you apply distortion back to computer-generated images. Here, the image preprocessor was used to convert the 360 VR image to this linear image. And now we're going to have it convert in the other direction, from this linear image back to a full 360 VR image. So I just tell this change shot images that I want to do that, and it makes a bunch of adjustments automatically. You could do them manually if you wanted. And I want to go and select what we just rendered out of Blender. We'll make sure we keep our alpha channel. We don't want to lose that. And now you're seeing it's rolling in these images. And if you look at the path of what we've got, it is a bit on the odd side, it seems. Because it's kind of bouncing around and it's not in the right spot. What's going on? Well, actually, the image preprocessor was set up to stabilize the original unstabilized footage. So now it it's actually being configured to change the Blender render back to match that original footage, the unstabilized footage. So if that's what we wanted to do, this would be the sequence we would use, and we can just write that out right now. But instead, we, we really want to get things to match up with the mesh. And you know, if you notice from this view, you can see that the camera is still centered up in the middle nicely. And that's kind of a clue to what's going on. And you can look up in the top view also, instead of the camera facing straight ahead, the camera is still following that mesh. So we need to do an unfollow. We just want to tell it, ah, don't do that anymore. And it just goes and resets things so that the camera is now facing due north again, fully stabilized to the world coordinates. And the image preprocessor is now taking that Blender image and putting it exactly where we need it to be underneath so that it matches up with the wireframe render. So this is what we're looking for to be able to composite with. And so now I can hit P to bring up the image preprocessor, do the save sequence, and here I just tell it where I want it to go. And in this case, we do not want to output the meshes. That would be bad. 
because then we would have the images with the wireframe over top. I don't know. Actually, if you're if you're just showing people that as a check, that might be something useful. But uh, we we want to be sure to output that alpha channel again. And now we can just go and have it run through and write our images back out. So again, we've got basically the same images as we got directly out of Blender using cycles. In this case, we went through a slightly more convoluted process using the Blender conventional renderer. And you know, it, it, as far as wall clock time is concerned, I think it's probably less. But really, the advantage of this process is that you can use any 3D application. It doesn't have to have any 360 VR capabilities in it. So thanks for watching.